That's why I did Free to Be You and Me and all of those shows because I, have, I, I guess because I have a teaching background. I've always been interested in, you know, and doing things that would be great for kids, yeah. My sister Terry had a child, a little girl, and she was reading to her the same kinds of stories that we had grown up on. You know, the prince will come along and give you a kiss and everything will be fine. And I said to my sister, it's going to take her 30 years to get over this, just the way it took all of us 30 years. You've got to find her other kinds of books to read. So she, my sister said, well, you go find it. You know, so I went to the store to find it, and it wasn't there. There weren't any stories that said to young girls, you can be anything you want to be. You know, the world is open to you. The choices are all there. All the things that I thought I had learned as a young woman had not found their way into children's books. In fact, one book I found said, uh, it was a picture book, and on one side it would say, girls, uh, boys are doctors, girls are nurses. Boys are pilots, girls are stewardesses. Well, I probably had a heart attack in the bookstore. I thought, my God, if this is what it is. So I decided that I would do a record for Dion. Because uh, my sister and I had grown up listening to, to story records, and I thought it'd be great, I'll do a, a record for her. And I asked my friends if they would tell me what they wished they'd been told as a child. And one man friend, one male friend of mine said, I wish I'd been told it was all right to cry. So we wrote a song, Carol Hall wrote a song called It's All Right to Cry, and we got Rosie Greer, this big, great, strapping black football player to sing It's All Right to Cry. And what I'd wished I'd been told that is that every girl didn't have to get married. And so we rewrote the story of Atalanta. In the original Atalanta, uh, the, her, her father's a king, and the, the young men in the village uh, run a race for her hand in marriage. In our Atalanta, Atalanta insists that she too be able to run in the race, and if she wins, she'll decide whether she wants to be married or not. And of course, she ties with young John, played by Alan Alda, and they decide that, you know, that she does, will not get married. So it was, everybody tried to really rewrite their childhood. And uh, I think that's why it was a big success, because the people who heard it, it struck a chord in them. You know, that these were the longings of their own childhood. And little kids liked it because it was, it was good music and good stories. But well, we did the album. And when I was going to do the album, I mean, I really expected it. You know, I was doing it for my niece. And the record company said, you know, these kinds of children's albums sell about 15,000 copies tops. So uh, it sold 400,000 copies right away. It became this big success. And so Carol Hart, the producer, and I decided that we would... Uh, do it as a television special. So ABC said, okay, go ahead. And we did. And it was interesting because when we delivered it, uh, the network got very afraid of William Wants a Doll. It was interesting with that show because you talked earlier and asked me about censorship on that girl and standards and practices and so forth. When we delivered uh, Free to Be You and Me, one of the major numbers is a piece called William Wants a Doll about a little boy whose father keeps giving him baseballs and footballs and and baseball bats and so forth, and all he really wants is a doll. And uh, the father won't let him have the doll, and the kids all make fun of him. Sheldon Harnick, who won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiddler on the Roof, wrote this song with, uh, with uh, Mary, Mary Rogers, who's also done a lot of musicals. And uh, it's a wonderful, and the children, the, the chorus is, William wants a doll, William wants a doll, and they make fun of him. Anyway, at the end, finally, the grandma comes, and she says, William wants a doll, because someday he's going to be a daddy, and he wants to hold a, a baby, and it's just a lovely, lovely message. Well, the network didn't like it. They felt that it was saying that boys should play with dolls, and that it would feminize boys throughout the country, and they really wanted me to cut the number. And I said, well, we can't. I mean, it's, this is an important piece. This is as important as it's all right to cry. We have to say to boys, it's okay to love and cuddle things. Dolls, animals, doggies. Babies, all of it, and uh, and it's and it's all right to cry. So they felt it was very subversive, and they were nervous about it. But we fought it, and um, and it uh, went out that way. But it was it was touch and go. Well, we did it on sort of multimedia. We we used live action dances. We used um, interviews where I interviewed some children about their feelings about their sisters and brothers, and we did a lot of animation. We did puppets. It was a really multimedia show. It was great. You know, the audience loved it, and the critics were very good to it. And we won an Emmy and a Peabody and a Maxi and a everything possible. It was a, 
it was an exciting, exciting to do it. Because it was, it had a real message. It was a non-sexist, non-racist show. It was really about busting through stereotypes. And um, because of that, you know, sometimes you ruffle people's feathers, but also you hit a chord. <laughs>